Hey folks, this is Matt once again. Welcome back to another Steven Seagal review of his directed video stuff. And this time it's Born to Raise Hell. Street Justice Has No Rules. Born to Raise Hell, good title. Makes me think of that song from Airheads. Born to Raise Hell, Born to Raise Hell. Da -na 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 -na, and we do it so well. I think that's Motorhead. And that's a fun movie, Airheads, with Brendan Fraser and Adam Sandler and Steve Buscemi. You had the voices of Beavis and Butthead make a cameo. I think Ernie Hudson and Judd Nelson were in it, and Chris Farley, and <coughs> a lot of people. And you can tell how interested I am to talk about this one, because I'd rather talk about Airheads. I will say this is probably, considering the stuff I've been doing lately, more of a mild rant. Because I can't, I don't think it's a good movie. It's, it's got its problems too. It just, maybe because the recent, not even recent, just the directed DVD Seagull films I've been watching. I thought Urban Justice was decent. I liked it, had fun, and Pistol Whipped had fun. And to the sun, the Keeper were like, eh, alright. Generic time wasters at best. This. I can't even put it on that level. But you gotta understand as well. I've been watching shit like. Against the Dark. Kill Switch. Attack Force. Today You Die. Shadow Man. Flight of Fury. So I mean. Compared to those, this is a winner, but it's not really a winner. That's why it's, I can't be extremely pissed, rage against the machine, but it's a mild rant. Getting into it, you still have some pretty bad dubbing ADR, aka not his voice. Sprinkled throughout, not as big as films a la Attack Force or Submerged or Kill Switch, but once in a blue moon you'll hear that. And Seagull's character is sort of an Interpol task force. What do they call it? International Drug Task Force. It starts off with it's in Romania and Seagull and this other guy. Seagull has a shotgun and there's a guy at the bar. He's like, where's your war? And Seagull goes, this is my war and bitch. And so I smirked at that. And this little firefight, and then you get these weird freeze frames. I'm like, what's going on? And it stops in the middle, and then it's credits. I'm like, what the fuck? Well, it's one of those movies where it starts out with an action scene, and you will see the rest of it at the end of the film. And then after the credits, it's two weeks earlier. It's one of those scenes. And apparently after 9-11, they realize that narcotics were reasons that financed terrorists and so there's an international drug task force made and from narration that's not Seagull's voice but it's supposed to be his character apparently his partner has been killed and he's been sent to replacement and he will find the men responsible as his voice double tells us God, if you took a drink on how many times you heard a voice that's supposed to be Seagull's character but it's not his fucking voice, you would die of alcohol poisoning and your fucking family would die of alcohol poisoning and your entire fucking town would die from alcohol poisoning if you went from The Foreigner to where the hell movies done this year. I'm, I'm, I'm not even there yet. I'm at 2010 when this came out. So the year that Stallone and Dolph Lundgren did The Expendables, he was in Machete in this movie. And I know someone's going to ask, which would you rather watch? Neither. I'd rather watch the first Expendables. But there are a few little fight scenes in the film, and I... Didn't mind them, thought they were all right, because some of them are actually shot wide enough so I understand what's going on, and I don't notice fight doubles, I notice Seagull doing a lot of it. 
and there's a little bit of an impact in the fights. And when Seagal hits someone, sometimes blood sp spills out of the guy's mouth with a little bit of slow-mo in the right spots. So I thought some of the fight scenes were all right. Again, nothing to compare to his theatrical movies back in the golden era of Seagal. But considering a lot of his directed video stuff that I've been seeing, it's all right. And there's also some pieces of dialogue I enjoyed. Like that one, like, this is my warrant bitch, and shows a shotgun, and a few other lines throughout. The story, like so many of Seagal's directed video films, are they blend together. Like if I quiz someone, uh, what was the plot of Shadow Man compared to Black Dawn, compared to this movie? A lot of people would be like, exactly. I mean, the stories, well, quite a few of them are fairly dull, including this one. And you also notice that a lot of directed video Seagal films don't really have memorable villains. Like, villains that really make you, ooh, yeah. Like, Tom Lee Jones and Under Siege. And people say, well, that's a big budget movie. Well, It's like if I come to think of it, there's a lot of directed video films where the villains are kind of forgettable. So I guess you can't just blend that on Seagal. It's a lot of directed video movies, which is a shame. But other than a few fight scenes that I thought were all right, and some lines of dialogue I enjoyed, which I'll get to when I'm getting further into this, there's also, you know, there's a kind of two sets of bad guy, one who deals with drugs who's working with another guy who does these home invasions where he rape him and his buddies rape and kill people steal stuff and the drug guy doesn't know that this guy's doing it and the drug guy has a wife and kid and later on the drug guy goes if I ever find out that this shit Seagal told me of what you're doing is true I'll kill you myself so they have a little bit of end fighting and then the drug guy kind of forms a little bit of a partnership with Seagal at the end and that was a little bit teeny bit interesting to the story this is that's not a typical thing in Seagal films especially his direct to video stuff and believe me I've been watching every single one of them for this marathon Seagal-a-thon of reviews but it's just it's an hour and 36 minutes long it's I think a good 15-20 minutes to have been cut out Seagal has a partner, a new partner, the replacement, who there's no reason for him to be there. And then there's a moment where the partner goes, oh, my wife says I'm, we're going to have a new baby. I'm thinking, you're not really going to do this movie, are you? And lo and behold, later on, the guy gets shot in the neck and dies. I was ready for someone to go, Mendoza! A few people will get that. <sighs> It also amazes me how so many of these directed video films cost like ten million. Like apparently this film cost ten million dollars, and others cost twelve or fifteen million. I go, really? Like Drive with Marta Koskas was nineteen ninety seven film, and that cost like three or four million, and that looks more high tech, and there's action and stunts and just movie making than most. Pretty much all these Seagal films combined, these directed video ones. Uh, but uh, anyway, going back, like I said, uh, yeah, one bad guy and his friends who go do do these home invasions, while the other is this bad guy who sort of will put dope around women and they tape to their stomachs to act as mules to sh take drugs from one place to another. Um, then you have Seagal who's part of this team that there's one scene they go in and there's this woman with tits hanging out and I think Seagal knocks a guy off his motorcycle and I say I think because the way it's shot you have a guy but you don't see Seagal's head. You s it's sort of like 
Shit. I don't know if I can do this. Imagine if I'm all the way back and the head's off screen like that. Right? I imagine that this bottle, this cap with Seagull's head, and then his head is right off screen here, and you see hands hit it hit a guy and the guy flies off the motorcycle. I'm like, that was probably a fight double. Concerning well, considering the fifty other direct to video Steve's golf films I've been watching so far. I'm like, if you want to see how an action star should take a guy off a motorcycle, watch this movie. You know, where Van Damme gives the fuck you kit to a guy who flies off the motorcycle and it's actually Van Damme doing it. But that's how you do it. Of course, it's slow mo, John Woo, so they didn't had to do it, but that's what made it for the better. But again, this is one of those little fights that is decent, all right, especially with, compared to his other directed video stuff. He takes two guys down, smacks one in the head. Uh, there's quite another thing I haven't mentioned too much, maybe once or twice throughout all these. When you do these fight scenes, shoot them wide and not handheld. And this one kind of falls into that trap, but the other fights later on, at least the director like shot them a bit wider, which I appreciate. And there's a guy under the bed, and the guy comes out, and Seagull's talking to him, and that's another line I like, where Seagull goes, Motherfucker, I'm speaking English. It's simple. I like when Seagull, he's not just totally 100% whispering. I like when he gets a little bit excited in his dialogue and shows some a, bits of energy and flair. And so when he does that, I like those lines. Same one when they cuff the guy and he tells his new partner, what the fuck is wrong with you, boy? About how the perimeter wasn't secured, but you said it was secured, but you didn't check that, and you didn't check the bed, and someone could have died. So I like those little bits of dialogue. But, and like I said, you have the drug guy using these women as couriers for drugs to tape to their bodies. Um, and then you have this snitch, this informant, who usually drives a motorcycle, tells Seagull about the guy who does these home invasions, and Seagull says, well, you're in jail, I'll let you out if you help us out. You, get, you gotta go to this meeting in the park, we'll be there watching. So they watch the guy meet the drug guy who works with the guy who does the home invasions. And one they least know is Seagull and his partner get found out while they're in their van. And again, decent, all right little fight sequence where Seagull, he really smacks a guy in the, he's smacking these three guys, smacks one guy in the face and a nice little bit of slow-mo where blood flies from the lip of the guy, does a wrist takedown, you know, take his wrist, flipping him down, and then this one thing that's sort of like a wrist uppercut, like he does sort of either, I forget if it was like this, or this, and the guy like <sighs> blood dripping out in slow mo. I like that. I'll take that over just a fight double doing fucking everything. I mean, it's not his heyday, but I'll take that over the many other films I've seen and shit like Kill Switch or Black Dawn, where it's mainly his fucking fight double. It's just Seagull face being inserted. And that's it. You tell us why enough and shot in the way that is mainly Sadol doing it. That there were fight doubles, I will admit I didn't notice this time. I will admit it. But it looked like it was Sadol doing it. And kicks one guy who flies back onto a bench. They get the drug guy later on who he does this thing where he hits his head against the windshield so later on he can blame Seagull and blame the authorities that Seagull did that to him. 
this so almost random scene where Sadal's with this woman who's I guess kind of his lover, and these guys come in and again decent little fight scene. Of course, that entire scene in the restaurant is full of bad dubbing ADR. That's not Sadal's voice. But it's actually wide shots. It's just sort of like throws one into a glass case and sort of almost clotheslines a guy to push him against a wall and flips another guy to a table far away. Um, the motorcycle guy who's the informant, he gets killed in a drive-by pretty badly. I mean, like, pretty nasty, where he gets, like, two shots to the head. Practical. And, like, blood flies back out of the, the back of the guy's head. I'm like, ooh, that's... That's one thing I'll say about a lot of these directed video Seagull films. They do have practical squibs. Doesn't save a lot of most of those films, but... You know, it helps. <laughs> You have a scene where Seagal and his team go on this little siege of this building where you get some gunfire and they grab a guy trying to ask him questions. But then another drive-by where they those bad guys shoot the potential witness. And this is when you get the two bad guys in fighting with each other. You get the drug guy saying, if I find out Seagal saying that you're going raping and killing people and women and... You know, I'll kill you myself because I'm a guy who has a wife and a kid. It's, drugs are one thing, but doing that is another. Although technically, your drugs could get in the hands of a woman and kids, and they could die. But, but yeah, I, I get was I get was trying to do. I get it. And so that the home invasion guy doesn't like that. So him and his buddies go in, and they go into the drug guy's house where his wife and kid are at. And one of the guy's buddies shoots the woman real quickly. And then the drug guy's uh, subordinates get there. You have a little bit of a firefight. And you have a little bit of chunk of film where Seagal's not even a part of it. And the drug guy, his wife is dead and he wants revenge. And so this is where he kind of teams up with Seagal's character. And then that's after when Seagal's partner gets killed, shot in the neck, a few scenes scenes before where, yeah, my, my wife is pregnant. I'm like, is, is he going to die? Yeah, he is. Mendoza! So yeah, Seagal and the drug guy kind of work together, and the drug guy leads Seagal to this room where some bad guys are at. And Seagal has a shotgun, and the drug guy has a grenade, throws it into the room. Nice practical explosion. That guy kills the... The drug guy kills the guy who shot his wife. And then we get back to the beginning of the film, where he's in this bar, and Seagal has a shotgun. He finds the, the, the home invasion asshole guy, shoots a shotgun around the steel door so he can kick it down. And again, an alright fight scene with some impact. He does this kind of cool thing I haven't seen him do before. We sort of does this. It's sort of... And the guy's like blood comes out, for, out of his mouth. And uh, like in some of these little fight scenes, I can feel the impact. And that, that helps a lot. So, like the sound effects and the little bit of slow-mo and the impact and blood flying from the lip. I like those little touches. It makes the guy shoot himself in the in the head. And then it ends with Seagal and the drug guy kind of forming a little bit of I don't know if respect, but hey, sorry for your loss of your wife who died and they're playing chess together. And it, the th Again, the reason I, I can't say I like the film because it's not really a film I could ever see myself watching again. It's just one of those things that a couple decent, all right little fight scenes and a couple lines of dialogue. And does that really save the film for me? No. It still has one of those dull, generic, kind of in one ear, out the other plots. A plot, plots, plots with a T, plots, that just pretty forgettable story. 
Again, I think 15, 20 minutes could have easily been cut out. I'm sorry, anytime I hear that fucking Dolby and ADR, that's not Seagull's voice, but it's supposed to be his voice. And 99% of these fucking movies, it just annoys the piss out of me because it just screams laziness. Because if I look at Van Damme's direct video film, it's not that 99% he's dubbing his own fucking voice. That might have been a little bit of Pound of Flesh, but that's a film I don't fucking remember really anything of anymore because, you know, I did. That's one Van Damme film I did not like at all. Dolph, I don't really remember any films that his voice is dubbed with someone else's voice. Her Arnold, Hercules in New York. And hell, you can even get the copy now that has Arnold's voice. Stallone, I don't remember a film where that happened with him. Fucking Michael J. White, or... Can't think of any. It's just... Dull forgettable plots. It feels a bit long in the tooth. Some slow spots that just really wanted me to hit the fast forward button. The villains, like a lot of directed video Seagal films, I didn't need to argue a lot of directed video films in general. Villains that you don't give much of shits about. So, other than a couple little fight scenes that I, I liked, and honestly, anytime I would put this in, I would just fast forward to the three, four, five little fight scenes and watch them. Again, it's nothing compared to his theatrical stuff, but for his direct video stuff, it's actually better than usual. And a few lines of dialogue I like from Seagull, what can I really recommend? So that's why I can't, I, I can't really call, I have, it has, it is a rant, but as you've seen, I'm not yelling at it. So that's why it's a mild rant. Because I can't give this a pass. There's too many actually solid directed video films I enjoy. Six Bullets, The Shepherd Border Patrol, Wake Your Death with Van Damme, Command Performance, The Russian Specialist, The Defender with Dolph Lundgren, among many others. Riot with Gary Daniels. I mean, Blood and Bone with Michael Jai White. Hell, you could argue Black Dynamite's technically, most people call it directed video film. Even if it was in a few theaters, most people call it, if that's the case, that's very strong movie. Love Black Dynamite. There's just too many that I like. And I can't say I like the film. It has a couple of hand, handful of things I liked or thought were alright, but it doesn't say the film. It's just a lot of the same shit. Boring, forgettable story, villains that don't mean much of anything. Um, granted, less than usual, but still the little handful fits of bad dubbing ADR that's not his fucking voice. And just... It says 2011, but on IMDb this is 2010. So I don't know if this is 2010 to I'll look it up and who fucking cares, right? Just put whatever fucking year. Yeah, that's boring. And if you wonder why I have the Blu-ray of this, long ago when I was collecting Seagull films, because I'm like, hey, I haven't seen a lot of them. This was cheaper than the DVD. This is not that much at all. So that's why like this is a Blu-ray. Has no features or anything. It's just it was cheaper than the DVD for some reason. And again, this is when I was sort of Literally, years and years and years ago, I was like collecting Seagull DVDs for cheap. For a time like this, for me to just go, hey, and I had never seen this before until I did this marathon. I'm like, you know, let me see what it is. And it's definitely not as worse, but there's definitely a lot worser movies, but it's just. Yeah, I, I can't give her the pass. I really can't. But I, again, it didn't piss me off like some of those other ones. It just, eh, mildly, te you know. Maybe it's, maybe that's what Seagull's, maybe that's what Seagull's trying to do. If you watch enough of his shitty directed video films, your mind will get numb 
and then you watch something that normally I'd be raging at, but now I'm like, it's, it's, it's mild rants. <laughs> if, if that's... I'm done. It's 25 fucking minutes long. I got like 50 other Seagull films to get to later. But before, again, good title. Good title. Wish it was in a better movie later.